supply of PPEs and the case management uh, protocol to uh, our health workers across the country. And the Director General of the Ghana Health Service will do that. So uh, welcome. I want to start by inviting the Honorable Haji Ali Mamahama, um, who will give us a brief on the disinfection exercise and what will follow next from there. Assalamu alaikum and good morning. All protocols observed. Minister, Minister for Information, thank you for the invite. The Minister of Local Government and Rural Development launched our sensitization program with our markets quite recently. And as part of the sensitization program, we met with the market queens, the market leaders, and picked a date to start the exercise of uh, fumigating our markets. The leadership agreed that the market in Greater Accra be disinfected on Monday, 23rd March. We therefore tasked the MMDCEs to do profiling and zoning of markets in Greater Accra. 137 markets were identified and were all sprayed, fumigated yesterday. We are grateful to the market women who cooperated in this exercise. And as you are all aware, they did not, they complied with the request to stay out of the markets. Most of them were, they were all out of the markets. It was just in a few instances, like Abogloshi, that we saw a few people, not for trading, but people who usually spend the nights there and they had to leave. But by and large, they cooperated and we are most grateful to them. Let me also say we are most grateful to the media because the media helped to raise the awareness. You raise the awareness, everybody knew the markets were going to be, uh, few, uh, to be sprayed and that the markets, the traders should stay out. And you are all part of the exercise and I'm most grateful to you too as well. You are playing your role, so continue to support in this exercise. What next? The, yesterday was mainly spraying and cleaning, some limited type cleaning. And a lot of rubbish was packed as you saw and this morning at dawn, the exercise continued to clear the garbage. And I'm told, I haven't gone out yet, but this morning the exercise was to continue clearing the garbage, and they have done that. But the cleaning of the market is essential, especially a place like Abu Gloshe. You all saw that it's very dirty, especially the streets. And the Ghana Army is going to support in the cleaning of the streets of Abu Gloshe today. And, and they were supposed to start this morning. And we're also asking the women to continue with this exercise with the support of their various district assemblies and the environmental sanitation unit. The sanita environmental sanitation unit is a department of the district assemblies. And they have skills in that. They know how to do the spray. They know how to support and train other people. To, so the, the environmental health sanitation unit to train other people so that this spraying will be done periodically. We would def uh, define when it should be done, the spraying and the cleaning at, uh, of the markets. But we would also entreat the women to take, women and men in the market, it's not only women who are in the market, those in the market, we entreat them to also play active role in cleaning their various areas. We have planned to continue the rest of the country. It's not only limited to Greater Accra. Our plan is to start uh, Ashanti region on Thursday, and we've, we've uh, come out with a schedule. I will eventually share the schedule with the media so that you help us in raising the awareness. So for the next one week, we'll be targeting the rest of the country. There were concerns raised about whether the perishable items were, clean, uh, were affected. We ensured that all the traders covered they are goods, especially the perishable items. And those of you who went to markets, you saw that. In a few instances, we saw some small, maybe a small tray of food here and there, and we collected all those things out. And definitely, those things are not going to be brought back to the market. So most of the food items were cleared. Some people are concerned about whether 
the uh, efficacy of the uh, chemicals that were used. What uh, we used chlorine solution, and I'm told that this is the WHO recommendation for spraying and killing of viruses, including coronavirus. So that's what we do use. Chlorine solution at uh, the 0 0.5. The scientists know what that means, <laughs> 0 0.5. That's what uh, we use. So the plan, the, the clean, clean up will continue. The this infection, if there's a need, as I indicated, will continue the rest of the country. If there's a need at a period for us to repeat, we may, we may have to do that. But hopefully, the, we are all tackling this coronavirus issue, giving it the, uh, putting the right attention where it's there. So my anticipation is that sooner or later, we'll be out of the woods. I think I'm done. So thank you very much. Minister of Local Government, we are quite satisfied with the spring. We think it went on well. Uh, we started with Greater Accra. We couldn't just start the whole country at once. So we started with the Greater Accra, and we are satisfied with the results we got yesterday. And we thank every single one of you for the cooperation we got. Even the shoppers, they uh, cooperated because they didn't go around looking for food. So we, we appreciate everybody, and we are most grateful. Thank you. Um, thank you, Honorable Haji Alima Mahama, the Minister responsible for local government. She'll be leaving us because this morning um, the leaders of the market women are meeting His Excellency the President. She's a part of that meeting. Um, later, the President will be meeting the leadership of TUC on this matter, and then the transport owners um, on the kind of support we can provide for them also on this matter. Now, as our last night, the case count was 27. I want to invite um, Dr. Bedou Sarkodie, who is the head of public health at the Ghana Health Service, to give us the case management report on that 27 before we provide an update this morning. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I give this on behalf of the Ministry of Health and wish to indicate that the COVID-19 pandemic remains active and many more countries have reported cases. Globally, 177 countries and ter territories have reported cases and as at 24th March today, 2020, total of 381,598 cases, including 16,000 559 deaths have been reported. Ghana confirmed the first case of COVID-19 on the 12th of March 2020. Since then, case incidence has risen sharply. And as at yesterday, because we have not concluded today and we would give the updates later in the day. As at 23rd March 2020, a total of 521 suspected cases have been tested for COVID-19 by Noguchi Memorial Institute Medical Research and Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, KCCR. Among the suspected cases, 27 have been confirmed positive. The country has recorded two deaths, and the rest of the 25 confirmed cases are receiving treatment in isolation. Of the confirmed cases, 20 of them are Ghanaian national. The majority of them returned home from various affected countries. Seven are of other nationals, namely Norway, Lebanon, China, France, and United Kingdom. Contact tracing is ongoing, and as of 23rd March 2020, we have on a list 598 contacts that have been identified and are being tracked. 19 of the contacts have developed, have completed 14 days of mandatory follow-up. And one of them, one of the contacts developed symptoms and have been confirmed positive. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Dr. Bedusa Kodier. This is the update as at last night. As he mentioned, later this morning, we will provide a further update um, based on some significant events that have um, taken place. Now, you would also recall, ladies and gentlemen, that His Excellency the President announced on Saturday a closure of Ghana's borders, effective Monday morning. Um, the Ghana Immigration Service has been literally policing our borders. I want to call Mr. Fifa, Deputy Controller General of the Ghana Immigration Service, to kick up, give us a quick update on the closure of the borders and the state of our borders as at now. Mr. Fifa, please join us with that very quick update. And then we'll talk about those who were put in mandatory quarantine. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Minister, we update you subsequent to our previous brief. As at 22nd midnight on Sunday, we closed the country's borders, land, sea, and air. Border patrol officers have been deployed to man and seal off all unapproved routes. Restriction of entry and departure are being strictly enforced. The situation as it is is that because of the closure or the suspension of flights, the concentration is now on our borders. We have noted, especially along the Aflao border stretch from Aflao to Akanu, various attempts by individuals both foreigners and Ghanaians to enter illegally. They have been intercepted by our border patrol personnel. On the 23rd, that was yesterday, the Akanu border patrol officers intercepted seven Nigerians who had entered illegally. Three males and four females. They were sent back across the border to Togo. Earlier on the 22nd, Aflao arrested an American who had also crossed over from Togo. We believe with collusion by officials across. It was noted that he had landed at the Lome airport on the 20th of March from the USA. So he was attempting to circumvent the suspension of flights. He was referred to the health officials, tested, and for now proved negative, but he's under arrest and detention and is being sent into mandatory quarantine. Further determination on the action to take on him will be announced in consultation with the legal authorities. We have also noted that transporters and the local communities in the Aflao area are aiding people to enter. Twelve Okada drivers were arrested yesterday for attempting to smuggle persons across the border. They have been arrested, and we are discussing with the police how to prosecute them possibly. The Okada, the motorbikes have been impounded. From our Sogakope border, uh, inland border post, five persons have been intercepted. A Ghanaian, a doctor, who also flew in through Lome and entered illegally was intercepted there. Check on his passport revealed that he had flown in through USA. Ethiopia Airlines continues to fly to Lomi. So we are watching that border post very closely because that is where we are seeing the tendency of persons moving through. And significantly, this Ghanaian is a medical doctor. We expected him to know better. The other two are Ivorians. They all hired vehicles from the Aflao border and were moving to Accra. 
The drivers and the vehicles have also been arrested and they are all being sent into mandatory quarantine. And thereafter, the issue of prosecution will be considered. From Elubu this morning, 21 persons have also been arrested attempting to enter illegally. Five Ghanaians, nine Beninoans, three Nigerians, a Malian, and three Ivorians. They have been sent back, but the Ghanaians have been retained and are being sent into mandatory quarantine. From our northern borders, totally shut. There have been attempts by Nigerians and Burkinabis to travel out of the country in buses. They have been stopped. Honorable Minister, ladies and gentlemen, we want to send a word of caution to our border communities and the transporters. We are not in normal times. So the manner they have been operating in conspiring to smuggle people in and out of the country should cease. The border communities form a part, a critical part of our border management strategy. We expect them at this time to cooperate with the security agencies. They should rather inform us of illegal entries rather than aiding them. When the coronavirus hits, it will hit them too, and it will start from them. We are also sending a word of caution to all persons out there that Ghana's borders are completely shut. Do not attempt to enter. You face arrest, detention, mandatory quarantine, and possible prosecution. Thank you, Your Excellency. Honorable Minister. Um, thank you, Deputy Controller General. And um, that point is clearly made that on the instructions of His Excellency the President, Ghana's borders are completely shut. If you attempt to breach it, you will be arrested uh, and either sent back or dealt with in accordance with law. Now, um, in that same announcement that His Excellency the President made, he also mentioned that persons who are arriving within the Ghanaian jurisdiction between the time of that announcement and midnight Sunday to Monday were going to be put into mandatory quarantine. Um, we would like to take a quick update on what has happened, reference to how many persons uh, were affected by that, and what is the status of the mandatory quarantine, especially as we begin to see videos, et cetera, on social media, that makes the picture a bit blurred for many. Let me call on um, Obi Dixon, who will speak for the National Security Secretariat that is handling uh, this one. Obi, and since we are all touching the podium, et cetera, you may want to. <laughs> Honorable Minister, I thank you for the injunction, and I will do so presently. Honorable Minister, Ministers of State here in Gadded, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, as the Honorable Minister has rightly put across, uh, not too long ago, the President made certain directives clear to this country. Now, pursuant to those directives, the Ministry of National Security, the National Security Council Secretariat, and also the Ghana Health Service put together a team that has been putting into motion an operation codenamed Operation COVID Safety. And so, pursuant to putting across um, such an operation, a number of issues have actually cropped up with it, largely very successful in the manner in which it has been handled, and also fraught with some of the issues that the Honorable Minister has here mentioned. But permit me first to just begin by giving you something that will be a roadmap or a chart that gives you some clarity as to the manner in which these quarantine procedures have been effectuated, particularly under the operation. And so this is how the walkthrough is, at least for those who seek to know how it actually unfolds. The first is that prior to arrival at KIA, the Kutika International Airport, the pilot informs passengers of government's imposed mandatory quarantine. Subsequent to that, the immigration officials board 
the aircraft that come onto our tarmac will arrive in Ghana to confirm if passengers have been rightly informed. Now, if they have not, they pass on information to passengers before their disembarkation. Three, at the arrival hall, Port Health officials are the first in line to meet these um, arriving passengers and conduct medical screening of the entire passengers that are light. Point number four, passengers then move to complete their immigration formalities. Point five, whilst all this is going on, the airport announcements keep blaring and visiting repeated announcements of the need to observe social distances, just as we in this assembly here have observed some good social distance. Now, at that stage, the information on mandatory quarantine is again re echoed to all passengers. Passengers move to the carousel thereafter to collect their luggage and wait until they are called to board their buses. The passengers return back through immigration, port health, and then drop their luggage in a conveyor belt. That leads to a waiting truck. Passengers then proceed to a standby bus, which takes them to their destination. Now on board the bus, a designated official informs the passengers on the destination or the quarantine facility and takes questions from passengers. The exercise is sometimes done also at the destination hotel to avoid delays at the airport. Uh, you could imagine the number of arriving passengers that come. Now, point eight. On arrival at the quarantine facility, passengers disembark in a controlled manner. They disinfect their hands by either washing them or using hand sanitizers and then proceed to check in. So point 10, the attached gui guidelines um, or the guidelines that I have actually been provided on mandatory quarantine are then uh, put into their rooms. And that is for ease of reference and also for compliance by passengers. Ladies and gentlemen, Currently, the total number of quarantinees that we have actually successfully put into quarantine stands at 1,030, 1,030 for emphasis. Now, the few reactions that um, a number of you have seen perhaps on social media and other forms of communication are by their very nature quite exacting, yes, but they are also of the essence of quarantining. Quarantining imposes um, a lot of strain and a lot of uh, psychosocial issues on quarantinees. That is a fact to be reckoned with. Because as you would mostly have realized, these people actually embarked on a journey at a time at which the orders had not been put into effect. And so whilst they made the, the land or they are told that this is a situation awaiting you. And so there's a natural inclination actually to be anxious, to show irritation and to show some kind of stress. The information can be distressing. And so in pursuance of that, we have also gotten on board a number of um, psychologists. As I speak or as we meet here in this assembly, there are a number of them that are actually proceeding, uh, visiting the various facilities around um, um, the places that we have quarantined. Now, Honorable Minister, we on our part, the security agencies will do everything in our might to ensure that those in quarantine are reasonably comfortable. It's a duty thrust that we will execute well. However, we urge them to also be cooperative with the officials and with all those kinds of persons that come into contact with them that are in the nature of medics, in the nature of security, also psychologists, both in their own interest and also in the larger interest of our country. I think that is a very great civic ob obligation which they have. For now, we will accommodate all those things and persuade them to be able to come to terms with the period of quarantine. And that ends perhaps our formal brief to you. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. I've been advised to...
Okay. We sanitize. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned earlier, you recall on Saturday, the 21st of March, the President of the Republic announced an enhancement of Ghana's response and included um, two items that we've discussed, closure of the borders and then the mandatory quarantine. Now, the government is aware that the exercise is a bit uncomfortable for these 1,030 persons who entered Ghana's borders within that period. However, the measure has become necessary because in the days leading up to this mandatory quarantine, it became quite clear as our index cases were being reported that our biggest risk or our highest risk was from the importation of cases. Indeed, as at the time, you could tell that about 90% plus of the cases that were being recorded were from importations. That decision, as well as the decision to close our borders, was necessary so that we could arrest any further risks from imported cases. And the President did not take those decisions lightly at all. Now, as has just been mentioned to you, consequent to those orders, 1,030 people are mandatorily quarantined as we speak to you this morning. And now please pay attention um, to this part a bit more. Respiratory residue samples have been taken from 611 of these persons. Even as we are speaking, they are going on with the picking of samples. Now, 185 of those samples have been processed. I want to invite the minister responsible for health um, to give us an update on this, which will change our case um, count and then some consequential um, instructions will follow. Minister. Honorable Ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Out of the 185 test results received, we have 25 of those quarantined tested positive. If we add on to the earlier number of 27, it means we have 52 tested positive in our country at the moment. Those in quarantine we have actually deployed psychologists to have chats with them. We have also, in the process of handing them over to our case management teams, we have set up. And they have started taking them to isolated centers for case management, meaning treatment. Definitely, not all of them will be critically ill, and they are not. Some might not be ill at all, but decisions on them will be on individual and individual case management issue. If you are not even found to be ill, you still have to be stay in quarantine for the mandatory 14 days. Earlier on, we were getting indications like if you test negative, we may release you after four days. But on advice, technical advice, and we've met all the doctors, we cannot do that. So we'll have to keep you for the entire um, two weeks, which is the 14 days. We have adequate room in Accra, various centers to actually take care of all those that have been um, tested positive at the moment. But going forward, we have a team that is going around identifying places that we can set aside for isolation for case management, not only in Accra. What we have identified so far is that we may have, we can describe two areas in Ghana now as our own epicenters, Accra and Tema together, and Kumasi. We are doing what we describe as contact tracing. In Accra, we have deployed 98 field officers, epidemiologists, and community health officers that have been trained to be doing the tracing. 
and it looks like we are actually succeeding in getting to people. In Kumasi, we have deployed about 50 trained people who are also doing contact tracing. The advice I will give now by this evidence is the fact that wherever we are, all those of our brothers and sisters who have come in, we should advise them to put themselves in self-quarantine if we haven't tracked them yet. And they should also be talking to the health authorities in the area where they live to send teams to observe them. They can be calling on telephone and be describing their conditions to the health officers they get in touch with, said so that we can protect the rest of the population against community spread, that is the horizontal spread we are seeing in our country at the moment. Mr. Minister for Information, I think this is all I can say for now, and we'll go quickly to go continue tracing those that we need to trace and do the talk that we have to talk to those in quarantine and make sure that case management team are working very quickly to ensure that people don't fall severely ill before we get them to centers that we have dedicated for treatment. Thank you very much. Minister, thank you um, for that brief. Colleagues, just to reiterate some highlights of this part of our brief, because it is very critical. The decision was to close the borders and to put into mandatory quarantine those who were coming within that period, because it was becoming clear that our biggest risk was from importation. And just to go over those numbers, about 1,030 persons are currently mandatorily quarantined um, under the supervision of the National Security Secretariat working in collaboration with the various agencies. Samples for 611 of them have been picked. Even as we speak, they are going through the process of picking those samples. We're told it takes about, um, about 25 to 30 minutes to complete the extraction of samples from one person, so it takes a while. They've done about 611, they are still doing it. The first 185 that have gone through the PCR testing, 25 of them, that's about 14%, 13.5 to 14%. And that shows that this, this vertical risk is quite severe, or was quite high, and that is why it has become necessary to take this measure. Um, as the minister has mentioned, those who are positive are gonna be moved uh, to an isolation unit for treatment. The um, case managers, the clinicians, the Ghana Health Service, they are very much on top of that. And those who've tested negative, um, if you have 13 more days to go or 12 more days to go, depending on when you came in, uh, that will also uh, be managed. We acknowledge that it is uncomfortable, um, but it is something we need to do for the greater public good. All support services needed to assure the comfort and medical support of the persons in quarantine, even at this time, is being stepped up by the state. We strongly advise persons in quarantine to cooperate with the security and health officials enforcing the mandatory quarantine. It is in your own interest to do so. Even the mere interaction among yourselves puts you at severe risk. As uncomfortable as the situation may be, now is not the time to disregard the rules and attempt to disrupt the laid down protocols. Officials are doing their best to provide you with as much information and support as possible, but please cooperate with them so that you don't put yourselves and others at risk. We're also noting incidents of family members, etc., who sometimes want to come to these uh, quarantine centers and want to find ways of getting in. It is in your own interest not to do so, because currently, even for the first cohort, about 14% of them have tested positive. It is in your own interest. Please cooperate with the protocols as have been outlined. Now, um, as a consequential measure, as the minister mentioned, all persons who enter the Ghanaian jurisdiction from the date of our first travel advisory, that's on the 15th of March, 2020, and who are currently under self-isolation are to be mandatorily tested in the coming days. Uh, our colleagues from Noguchi uh, and KCCR are going through the necessary, I think, bookings, and then they will start the um, mandatory testing of all of these persons who also came in within that period. And we'll provide some further information on that at this point in time. The uh, minister responsible for education has also been acting 
on uh, the president's instructions to ensure that schools uh, and education is not disrupted, even though institutions may be fiscally closed down. I'd invite him shortly, but I want to quickly invite Dr. Patrick Abuaji of the Ghana Health Service to close up this medical part for us. Our doctors and our nurses are the frontline practitioners. They are the persons who most likely come into contact with uh, any case that may show up there. And we continue to receive questions about their protection. The president keeps hitting on the fact that we must ensure they are all protected. Dr. Baji, please come up to the podium and give us an update of how you are ensuring that they are all uh, protected. There are some who also say, in terms of the case management protocol, they would like to have some more detail. Uh, if you can please respond to that. And then we wrap up the medical part and go to education. Yeah, thank you very much, Honourable Minister for Information. Um, Honourable Ministers, hearing at a time, ladies and gentlemen of the press, I think I'm very happy to join you here. In all this challenge, one of the key things is the staff protection. Because apart from this challenge we are having, we are having to deal with cases that already would have been there. Pregnant women will be there. People will be sick, malaria will be there. So two key things that we are taking care of is first is to start protection and secondly, to expand our capacity to be able to respond to the current challenge. As I mentioned last week, one of the things we are doing is we advise all health workers and facility managers to ensure triaging at the outpatients so that there's a pre-triaging where cases are selected to ensure that all respiratory cases are isolated and people are designated people see them so that we do not only uh, protect staff but also protect other patients who have come to the outpatients for care. To do that, PPEs have been provided. Currently, we have done more than 10,000 uh, PPEs distributed. We are going to ramp it up to about 50,000 within a short time. And when we talk about PPEs, um, there is a package of a set. There are some that are needed more. And so some of them, for example, we have over 3,000 coveralls, which is the one that you see covering people all over the place. You have the, the N95, which is a very highly, um, so that spills out all kinds of, up to 95% of all debris and all viruses. But that's called an N95. We have more than 2,900 develop, uh, distributed and more. We distributed goggles, we have face shields distributed, boots among others, and we have more than 100,000 gloves of different shapes uh, distributed. We are also ensuring that we to build our capacity, all our staff who are currently in, on steady leave have been recalled back to come and join the force until the schools are open, so to keep our support. And we also know that retirees have been asked to come back, and doctors who are awaiting their financial clearance are also being asked to, being recruited to participate in this exercise. The ordinary minister, the Minister of Health, has procured more beds to expand our capacity, beds and mattresses, to look at that. We are also have the training response team are trained across the whole region, and all regions are doing downstream training, including ambulance service staff and other people. Regions have identified treatment sites, because this may not just happen in Accra and Kumasi, and so all regions have beds allocated that should we have a case, this is where we have. Currently, we have about 545 beds allocated across the country. And it's expected that more will be identified. And as we get into the situation, we need more. The facilities will be asked to look at more. We may also look at other opportunities to create space to manage uh, the cases. The treatment protocols have been asked. Um, I can't take you through all that, but the, the most important thing, as happened all over the world, is the fact that when you have these conditions, please call. When you have cough, fever, etc., that has of respiratory nature. Don't just get into a taxi and go. Just call the numbers there. Now the 112 is working. Somebody will get back to you and make sure they will direct you as to how you seek care. Either they come to you. So we don't want a situation where everybody's rushing to the facility and the process of getting there, you are distributing uh, the cases. Um, Mr. Minister, that's all I want to I Thank you very much. Yes, we've also distributed more than uh, 
You see, I'll say 10,000 sanitizers, but what you know is that facilities and hospitals are procuring a lot on their own. We have also given the regions the opportunity to procure additional uh, PPEs out of the, the, the funds that we have given to them to protect staff so that they can do identify specifically what their facility needs are as far as their service providers. But let me add that when we say front lines have includes the security men, um, our patients, records, pharmacists, everybody who will, Mimi, I mentioned the pharmacists, I swear. Everybody who, by way, is part of the process of taking care of any patient who happen to be co uh, having a COVID-19. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. That's uh, Dr. Patrick Abwaje, Director General of the Ghana Health Service. Now, schools may have been closed down, but education is being facilitated to continue uh, through other means. The Honorable Minister for Education is here with us. He's been working with his team to ensure that education continues, even though schools may have been fiscally uh, uh, closed down. The Honorable Matthew Pokupempe will give us an update on what's happening in education. Good morning. Um, on Thursday, the 12th of March, when we had our first confirmed cases, the president addressed the nation. And in that address, and the subsequent address of the Sunday, the 15th of March, the president announced the closure of all universities, senior high schools, basic schools, both public and private, beginning on the Monday, the 16th of March. It had become necessary to close schools because schools had had an index case. One of our institutions had had an index case. And as we speak, students of that institution are quarantined on the campus. That announcement, we still gave room for final year SHS students to continue in school and final year junior high students to continue in school because their exams were around the corner. Subsequently, the president charged us to ensure online programs to facilitate education continuing. In that time, UNESCO got in touch with us and started a facilitation arrangement so that Ghana could participate in online and traditional media broadcast so that education continues. Because UNESCO had realized that there's going to be a break in education for some time all around the world. In the meantime, West Africa Exams Council, the one who conducts our exams on our behalf, also announced the suspension of exams. So we had to bring the final year students uh, to school, uh, back at home, meaning the WASI students or the SHS3 students and the BE students were all asked to go back uh, home. I must emphasize that the school's closure is a total closure, both public and private schools. The school's closure is a total closure of all schools within the country called Ghana, both private and public. Any head of institution that attempts to keep students in school does so at his or her own risk. If we care to know, all international exams, even in the parent countries, have been cancelled. And yesterday, or two days ago, I got a message that uh, the baccalaureate and the ICGCA levels, uh, the organizers have also suspended uh, so those exams. So there is absolutely no reason for a school in Ghana here to try to keep students in the school. In the meantime, a team had been tasked to ensure that we could continue education through traditional media, social media, online and everything. In doing that, we needed two ministries, uh, Ministry of Communication 
and Ministry of Information so that they can engage the radio and the TV stations as well as the telecommunication companies uh, to be able to deploy um, what we are attempting to do. We are in difficult and dangerous times and everybody must chip in his or her best. This COVID virus needs human beings to move. If we stop moving, the virus also stops moving. In so far as we move ourselves, uh, we go into places to come into contact with others, we human beings transport those viruses to where we go. That is why we are maintaining the social distances, and that is why we are urging people that if it's not an essential travel, please stop. Because if you stop, the virus stops. If you move, the virus moves. The team that was constituted to come up with our immediate, short-term, medium-term, and long-term plans, because we also have to recognize that this COVID-19 virus is a game changer. But how we manage ourselves, how we relate socially, and whatever is do, we do has changed subsequently. As soon as the virus are la landed in Ghana, we should assume that everything has changed. In my ministry, we split the workforce into two, and we have asked half to come one week and half to come the next week. Why? Because we have to maintain social distances even in our offices and have to find other means of engaging with our partners and our staff and our employees so that our movement doesn't aid the virus in also moving. The team that we comprised, uh, the team that we set up comprised people from Ministry of Education, the National Council for Tertiary Education, the Ghana Education Service, the Center for National Distance Learning and Open Schooling, the Ghana Library Authority, the Curriculum and Assessment Agents, all in a bid to ensure that whatever we come up with, every student in Ghana or every learner in Ghana can participate. The team was tasked to bring out solutions as well as conceptualizing effective and feasible solutions for the short term, medium term, and long term. They were to explore and ensure age appropriate content and resources for both pre tertiary and tertiary institutions. Uh, why do we say that? There are a lot of content, or a lot of content on open, and open educational resources out, out there that is available but may not be appropriate. So we needed to guide and guard what we broadcast to the Ghanaian students locally. So in the pre-tertiary space, we have the kindergartens, the pr lower primary, meaning primary one to primary three, the upper primary, primary four to primary six, the junior high school and the senior high school to contend with, as well as their universities, traditional technical universities, College of Education, and general other tertiary institutions in the country. We were to ensure access for all by providing multiple platforms of content delivery. If we decide we are going to do only online, I'm sure we are going to take a chunk of our population who don't have access to internet out of the system. So we have to have programs that will play on TV, on radio, and online. And also to explore collaborations including especially non-state actors. So this team invited private sector uh, players who had things to do that were relevant to educational delivery. They all had a chance to come to the ministry to present to us what they had. And those that were immediately available and culturally and content-wise and age-wise relevant were chosen by the specialized team. They also have come out with a program to roll out this content. That program is very much dependent upon collaboration between the Ministry of Information and the Ministry of Communication. We don't uh, know that space that much, and we don't intend to know that in this immediate time. But we wanted the telecos to zero rate educational material, because some already do, like uh, Vodafone. They zero rate educational material, meaning that if you get out onto an educational space on that data, uh, it is virtually for free. So we hope that 
through the Ministry of Communication, we can get all telco companies to zero rate content delivery and education so that Guardian students can participate. We also hope then uh, through the Ministry of Information, radio stations and TV stations will see the national agency in participating in their quota uh, to ensure that uh, content, educational content is delivered. We, like we said, uh, some channels, some TV stations have told us that they have 24-hour channels, they will turn up, they will turn them up for educational content. And we need more. We need it on free to, to free to air broadcast so that everybody everywhere in the country, as soon as there's a TV, uh, you can get access to that. Likewise, we want to employ radio stations to help as much as they, they can. So we will broadcast when we start uh, periods in kindergarten, periods in lower primary, periods in uh, upper primary, periods in junior high school and senior high school. The Center for Distance Learning Organization, CENDLOS, has developed an online program for all the core content in the senior high school ready to go. I've I, even given every senior high school student uh, a password and access to an iCampus system, where on the iCampus system we have notes with exercises, over 20,000 interactive quizzes, audio-visual lessons, including virtual laboratories, uh, interactive lessons, and over 3,000 sets of notes and audiovisual resources from open educational resources. These materials are already available to every senior high school student who accesses with his password on iCampus and is available for free. And this is why, the reason why we want uh, the Ministry of Communication to come in so that you go to certain parts of the country, it is only predominantly one network that is there. So if we got all the networks to buy into it and zero rate it for us, we can be sure for all our senior high school students, uh, it is available for them. For the junior high school students, we have an institution that is already broadcasting in the junior high school and the upper primary area in parts of Eastern region and Volta region that has made their studios available for us to develop more content and also broadcast it. That group, Plan International, has got five studios they have made available to us so that we can bring in more teachers to help us deliver the core subject uh, content area. Like I said, uh, the collaborating non-state actors included Scholastic, um, Plan International, Edmondo, and Development Partners, and other telecommunication networks that we have spoken to. In the tertiary space, we did invite some of the universities that were in close proximity to participate in the technical um, um, discussions. And um, we realized that almost all the traditional universities have functional learning management systems which may require upskill in order to make the service available uh, uh, to students. Almost all the five universities uh, which, are affiliated, which are affiliated the 46 colleges of education have on, uh, learning management systems they are deploying to affect all the colleges of education. The, some of the universities with uh, learning management systems available include University of Ghana, University of uh, Professional Studies, University of Health and Allied Sciences, University of Cape Coast, Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, University of Mines and Technology, University of Education, Wedeba, Kwame Nkrumah, University of Science and Technology, University of Energy and Natural Resources, and University of Development Studies. All these universities I've mentioned have already started deploying their online system. Before the, before the attack of COVID-19, and because of the numbers of free senior high school students that are, we are, that are coming out of the secondary system. We had engaged through National Council for Tertiary Education, Open University UK. Open University UK is the number one distance learning uh, tertiary institution probably in the world with over 60 years of history and licensed Open University Education Resources to over 70 nations around. Probably after Open University UK, the next institution will be Phoenix in the United States of America. Our discussion had gone very, very well. 
And as we speak, they have made a portal available for Ghanaian students through the Ghanaian universities. So if you go to University of Ghana, University of Ghana has a suite of courses that they want to use open university resources. That will be available to you, and that potentially would increase our population of our university students by over 30,000 and starting. And the more we get students to get on it, the lesser we have to pay. That technology is available, ready to be deployed, and it is one of the arsenals we have in our preparedness for the senior high school students to enter university. Eventually, after the medium term, now they are making it available to us at a cost to them, uh, but they think that with that partnership after four years, Ghana should be able to locally host Open University Ghana here to guard and guard all our distance learning education in the country. The only problem with distance learning education all over the world is quality and an assurance that somebody is not doing something for somebody. And the uh, Open University UK have the resources to police that very well, and we want all our universities to have it for free. Uh, government is going to acquire this technology and the technical ability and capacity for all universities in Ghana for free. The COVID, even though it's bad news, probably means that we should uh, make faster this facility. We request, and we know we collaborate very well, uh, all of us are part of the COVID presidential team, and the Ministry of Information, which has been so supportive, and the Ministry of Education, that with your support, uh, we have sent our ability to roll out to the Ministry of uh, Finance, and I know that we'll hear from them, supporting the Ministry of Communication, the Ministry of uh, Education, and the Ministry of Information to deploy the online programs and the so traditional and social media programs to the whole country. Before I end, I would say that moving from medium to long term, uh, we have a national digital literacy project that is going to allow a company to come into the country under 1D1F and establish a manufacturing base of smart tablets and mobile telephones and uh, laptops in the country to ensure that every child and every teacher in our educational system gets access to ICT facilities, both as a subject course and as a, uh, uh, as a tool to ensure better teaching and learning uh, in our country in our attempt to make Ghana a learning nation and a knowledge nation. Uh, like I said, we are going to also, in our bill to finance, ensure that we have a knowledge bank and an assessment but all in the cloud and all our educational material resources in the cloud so that everybody in Ghana who wants to learn would have access to those materials for free through the knowledge and the cloud basis. I would like to end by saying something. We are in very difficult and dangerous times and this is the only time when our collective survival, our individual survival depends upon our collective uh, uh, attitude and behavior going forward. Like I said, Mr. Minister of Information, the virus doesn't move. It needs me and you to move. And the only way we can stop this virus is when we start, we stop interacting unnecessarily. All interactions should be very, very essential. If it's not essential, don't do it. If you don't have to travel from Malamata to Medina, please don't, because our collective survival depends upon your individual behavior. And we hope Ghanaians can take that measure. Like I said, one of my institutions had an index case. And we have quarantined over 200 people in that institution. This is the time various agencies and, and, and unions and bodies should understand that in emergency times, there's nothing like mine. It is ours. Government will have access to every resource to prevent COVID-19 COVID from destroying us. If that resource includes a university, we would have it. If that resource includes a hostel, we would have it. Any resource available that is available to education ministry is available to Ghanaians, and it will be used in the defense of our fight against the COVID virus. The second thing I'd like to say that agencies and NGOs and CSOs have started writing to uh, education ministry and ever making a case. We do thank them for their collaboration, but we all are in it together and we need everybody to support government efforts in these times. Schools are closed, private and public, they are all closed. 
and all students should be at home maintaining social distances protocols so that we all survive. And I, I, I must say that we in education are taking the National Day of Fasting and Prayer seriously. We hope that tomorrow uh, we will all as a country rally around uh, this particular thing and I urge all students and, and lecturers and teachers to fast and pray so that this thing passes us and passes us uh, quickly. I hope the media organizations here to participate in the National Day of Prayer and at least your programming will reflect our reflective period and what Ghana is going through. Thank you. Thank you. So grab a bonfire. Honorable Minister for Education, thank you for that update on the education sector. Just to refresh our note on what we've done so far, we've uh, taken an update on what's happened in our markets, in the greater Accra regional markets, about 137 markets yesterday. We've taken an update on the case management report as at last night, which was about 27 cases as at that time. Then we have taken an update on the closure of our borders, including persons who have been arrested for attempting to breach uh, the closure. We have also gotten an update on those in mandatory quarantine uh, from National Security Secretariat. And then the Minister responsible for health has given us a very important update on those in mandatory quarantine whose tests have come in, about 185 of them. And it tells us that about 14% of um, those who were put in mandatory quarantine uh, from the airport and other jurisdictional entry points Saturday and Sunday, about 14% of them uh, are being captured in this bracket. So the vertical uh, uh, transmission risk, which we're hoping to cut, the numbers are beginning to show, and we continue to ask them to cooperate with us. The Honorable Minister of Education has just given us an update on the measures that are being taken in education. And we have about two or three more things to do before we wrap up and take your questions. One is on the public education update uh, that the Honorable uh, Pius and Amhajida will quickly give us on what's happening with public education. And then two, some general notes that government wants to share with the population. And then we'll take your questions. Honorable Pius. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Good morning, Honorable Ministers, colleagues. The Information Services Department of the Ministry of Information has started uh, the public education campaign on COVID-19 in general and the enhanced uh, hygiene practices of hand washing and social distancing in particular together with key stakeholders and partners such as the risk communication and social mobilization team of the Ghana Health Service, decentralized and other agencies on the ground in the various metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies. The strategy involves the deployment of public announcement vans and commentators and announcers drawn from the ISD. Poster and sticker campaign, use of the community information centers, the deployment of rig vans with digital screens, and also engagement with special interest groups, but conforming with the presidential directions on social gathering and social distancing. We have engaged with other agencies and institutions, such as the NCCE, the Church of Pentecost, and others on constituting an even larger pool of resources, including vehicles and personnel for this all important assignment. We are grateful to them and all of our partners and stakeholders, such as the USAID Breakthrough Action, the Toll, Casapreco Company Limited, and all others who have offered exhibition samples on hand washing and related matters for their nationalism and their kind assistance. We ask for the continued support and cooperation of all. Honorable Minister, we also report that informations have been deployed on mass media across the country in seven of our local languages, radio, television, and online at this time. 
We are grateful to the media and we encourage them to keep to their commitment that we arrived at at our strategy meeting of dedicating more airtime to COVID-19 information and discussion. Honorable Minister, robocalls and other internet-based communication tools are also being deployed. We are grateful to the country's telephonic companies and internet providers for their assistance. The Information Services Department has received materials needed, that is audio and visual materials, leaflets, and other printed materials, trained our information officers and other assets. We have also formed the district-based information teams headed by the DIOs and assisted by the heads of the other decentralized agencies, such as the MOFA, such as the Ghana Education Service, and so on, uh, to assist uh, in the information dissemination. But these teams are under the overall supervision of the Metropolitan, Municipal, and District Chief Executives. Uh, we believe that with now that uh, all these have been put in place, information about COVID-19 is reaching all the nooks and crannies of this country. Thank you. Um, thank you, Honorable Pius. Let me make some concluding remarks and then colleagues would invite you to ask your questions. We've also received a lot of questions from your colleagues in the press pool who couldn't join us because of the social distancing and have sent their questions in. So, uh, Mr. Biaji, I'd ask you to get us those questions as well. Um, please take note that the case count rise should be expected as we've explained. The general theory is that before you flatten the curve, you're going to have a rise, and then um, as all your measures work, you begin to bring down and then flatten the curve. So we continue to encourage Ghanaians, do not panic. Rather, spend your time and your energy helping us to share the messages on the preventive etiquette. Um, it's better to spend your time doing things to prevent it than to panic. So don't panic, spread calm, spread information, spread knowledge so that we can all um, protect ourselves. We also repeat the caution to those in particular who seek to smuggle people into the jurisdiction now that borders have been closed, or those who want to aid a disregard of the rules, for example, for quarantine and other things that have been put out there. Those who want to disrupt attention and focus at this point with all sorts of gimmicks, and those who want to profiteer, that our collective survival is at stake. It's important to join us in this exercise to focus on the necessary protocols that have been put out there so that we can all succeed together. Government is taking all the humanly possible measures based on the facts and the advice from the experts. But as the President mentioned, we are a nation that believes in God as well. It's not as though we are substituting what must be done for uh, prayer and fasting. As, as I'm sure you have heard us say and report to you, a lot is being done substantively. But even our national anthem starts with God bless our homeland Ghana. It's the first word in the national anthem. So we're a nation that believes in God as well. And that's why His Excellency the President uh, has mentioned, the Vice President has repeated, uh, my colleague, the Honorable Matthew Poku Prempe has just mentioned it. Wednesday, tomorrow, it's a national day to fast and pray that the Lord will bless our efforts with success. And we want to encourage all of us to take it as seriously as possible. We thank all the stakeholders, media, Ghana Medical Association, nurses and midwives, frontline health workers, frontline security uh, workers. We thank all of you, and we ask everybody to rally behind the red, gold, green, with a star in the middle at this point uh, in time. There's a microphone that I'd ask to be brought to the front. Please don't touch the microphone. Um, just put out your question, and uh, the ones that we can have responses to, we will take those responses. Now, uh, Professor Ampofo from Noguchi is here. This morning on the front page of the graphic newspaper, there's a story that says that Noguchi is calling for a lockdown. Um, I do know that the head of Noguchi has spoken to him and has asked him to make a clarification of that. So maybe I'll quickly give him the first word um, and then ask about general preparedness for some extensive testing, especially of those who have come into the country, even from the first advisory, how prepared are they to ramp up their testing um, measures? And then we'll take the rest of the questions. Prof, to the microphone, please. No, I mean, uh, please come this way. You, you come this way. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to set the record straight. Um, Professor Anand, Director of Noguchi. 
was not speaking on, was uh, making remarks which were misquoted. The Institute, the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, has not officially presented a viewpoint to the government of Ghana. Actually, the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research and other members of the Ghana Arts and Academy for Sciences have presented a position paper to government with some recommendations for consideration. So the headline is totally misleading. It was comments that a discussion with the news reporter which have been taken out of context. With regards to testing, um, the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research and the Kumasi Center for Tropical Medicine Research are using a molecular method for the detection of SARS-CoV-2. And we will continue to use this method to test respiratory samples to determine current infection with the virus. Let me make this clear. We are using a molecular method for the direct detection of the virus in respiratory samples to be able to determine that people are infected with the virus. The position of government at this moment is not to use a rapid test, which only shows that you've been exposed to the antibody and does not present a definitive indication of being infected. I hope that makes it clear. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's a good time to take your questions now. Please give me a wave. We would invite you to the microphone and that we can take your questions. Unless you would say that our brief has been so extensive that there are no questions today. Then I'll go to the platform. Could you, you have a question? Please come be, um, behind the microphone quickly. We don't want to waste too much. Okay, T. I'm a quite baby, you free press conference as the Ministry of Information. As we have for Bayemi and San Omakasa, I was here in Sam Dudonwa, Ede Atuja. In fact, the kind share market disinfection are enra a course, Honorable Hajia Alima Mahama, Ebe Kasa, and then the Deputy Director General of Ghana Immigration Service, and Susu Beka Safa, and she said, Yeah, 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 so she said, In some of the borders, Oma Chinkophobia, Oma Faculty Crime, Ebira Ghana, ha. Now, if you share figures and also so a kakra, say, I can say 1,030, and I want more under mandatory quarantine, 1,030, 611. Contact tracing on Gusua, one more, a 185 test results, and our more answer. I can 185 Nimuno, uh, and a pay year, but not Nipa 27. No many are any be out of 185 test results. No, a mu 25 Abeka 27. No, and say a case a Ghana ha recorded cases, coronavirus cases. I and Saka a year 52, a three every 27, a quote 52. Uh, and uh, no, no, no. Antines, uh, akwa yeah, Now, yeah. we would say PPs, you know, so we uh, 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 And uh, the fact that uh, almost say 3,000 PPs, um, the abigum, amamo, and I say 10,000 hand sanitizers. So, uh, is that enough? But uh, enough? Yeah, yeah, I'm more. I say only but rest. The amode ma yeni yeah, yeah, be brave because case is not endorsing. Inti mo fa be brave in kamu. Okay. Right. Aye, the best ya. Na afi ya sorry so, um, but but ma 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 na mi pa asembiye bisa vertical transmission no ebi obi ushe e wufia we nim na deba eka vertical transmission na ehi fa na sisi ya ba bedu sisi ana ni ya du ni se first na na obi obi ni ya osa ya ya kani ni na mem de mem ko Italy mem ko China sisi ya bedu ya mu nti e spreadi wa ya ya fi okay nti en ya China se mi obi a tu kwa kwa bruti okay en ya China en ya South Korea en ya Bedia e ya ya mu en a fe de ya re na atiesi a e spreadi nti mawa en mawa de nya o se won tu kwan da won ko ba bi an tu de bi ntimi nya o yesre mu aba beto yen aba ya fi e e ba dwa so ya mo ya ho ban se na be ya ni ya tete ni ba bi no e ma meto yen so okay we should send a number no a jump it from 27 to 52 mm. and a pay you know mm. um back to the discussion and i mean no yeah yeah social distancing in this half to any day man or man for and one big yapa say and see a sister will be at here say say that not good you know you can say only bbi will come up maybe she's here and who yapa and i'm sorry i said i can 
first ne sana na yesi hu ese ni ehsehye ya ya hye ni na ye pamo chew muma ye ni sosie bi so a ye nkon ko du ba bia ye kan social distance eno ne se uma se se me ne bra yiti ye wo interval kakra e wo ye ntem nti ye ntwetwe ye hu efi nkofo ho no he se obi utwe ho bia ka se o ya ahia an ya ahia se be ya unya bie se be ya ho fa bi mo bi ya ahia na an tete an si bebre okay afei me be se dwuma die no ase na me bobo me toto srene ni pe binom ni pe kuo bi se se an ye duro no aye ni bresem aban ko an entimi en so sa die yi emu ankra ankre politicians uh, celebrities musicians en sore sore asofo traditional rulers na no ma hinfo ye fa ye hunjim sanitizers ni gloves ni nose mask ni ade yi yes re wa wo sika ye wo gana ha se bi mu wo kakra wo mu ye nka se wo de ko ya de afa beto ye so wo to sanitizer 10 ko ampo na wa jini pa 10 wo to 20 awa jini pa 20 nti ye pa mu chew sika ni kura wa en fa so boto ji wa go no se se de ye so mo me ente so ye fa bi mu a o mu a jafi apia nom ne ho aho anu mu nya ye srem se se ye nsa da ye nsa ye mu obi a mu a ye ye ntimi ensi yare ne kwan me pe celebrate ya yare ye anu be ba fam o be ba be ka se me ton me toyota camry <laughs> ena me de koto sanitizers me ton masasi bi e da ha ena me de koto ppe is de bo a anese fo me ton me iphone ena me de koto gloves me ton me bibi say because this is what humanity is all about it is a nay we ask you cause ahun hia mu nya ko pon shira ma mo se mo a baby na went me am bo asa kwa yon no so a ene na nipa no a ye ye nipa no e se se ye bo aban ye ho no na ye bo aye ho kwan ben so ma me shira ma me ma wa no di se mo twa to na fi ye se se ye se kasa tinten en to konko ka kra na ya kan na ye pa mo chew mo me fa bi mo ye ntoma no hand washing Distance yourself from an infected person. Uti so bia nya bia enko honum. Uwa sanitizer fa bife fa wansa. Unu wawo na ma mane me. Udi u u bawa fa tissue kata wano. Uwi ya fa tu da zimu. Ya ya ne sa. Se ne ye hui. Most of cases ni ye imported ones. Ya anka sa ne nye bebe ni ye nye nye wu yi mu. Nti se yeti mi bo anon ba ya. Ye 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 nye bi. Nti ya sre mu. Ubi ya ni ya di tu bia ni nina. Ubi ya anfe se be ye be di so na yare ne entia te se bebe na ayam hihie ne ma ye ye mu hihie ne omo omo nya bi no omo ye omo fra bochi most of them e na omo ba ha se ya quarantine omo be a on treatment ye ye omo ho adwuma enti ma obi anya mu hihie 50 eh ye do 52 ye ba be wi ye pamo chewo okay prisla chewa chumesi ye public health disease control officer ona na pay pampa so dwuma die me ne ne tra se atwetwe ko me din the chief jeff force ne adru no ya kroso na fe ya ko adom kase dem na na ya brefo e stand by na na otimi nka me te on ka pa good enti ene ye tie ensem no bebre press conference e ko so em wo de da da ruba wo bo wo fie hapa ya social distancing ene kwa ya se fa so na ya mfufuro so bebre but o she se se abi a number se ya ko do from 27 to 52 na na that's what i'm saying 